We live in a world without Sabbath. It's hard to even imagine a world with a Sabbath. One full day, sunset to sunset, every week where we don't work or shop at all. Or maybe for some of you that's not hard to imagine. Maybe I know there are people here who have accepted this invitation to rest in the abundance and freedom of God's good creation one full day a week. But for me, and I think for many of us, it's hard to imagine a world with a Sabbath. Jesus lived in a world in which Sabbath had become overly complicated and maybe overly emphasized with detailed rules that actually threatened to interfere with the spirit of the day. But we live in a world in which we have decided that it's just not possible. And so we've given up. Now that we have few natural limits on our work, electricity means we don't have to stop when the sun goes down, cars and snow plows mean that bad weather can't keep us from the office, internet means we can work at any time and in any place, our sense of time has been flattened and each day can feel like every other day. Some of us, if we're honest, don't actually mind this. We love work, we're good at work, and if we were to step away from it entirely for a day, we might fall behind. The markets need to be monitored and the emails need to be answered, and we can fit it in. And if we didn't have our work, who would we be? We wear our busyness like a badge of honor, a sign that we deserve the success we have. We've worked hard for it. For some of us, the demands of family schedules make keeping Sabbath feel impossible. We can't control the competitive soccer schedule or the availability of shifts for the teenager's job at the cafe. And we also can't bear the thought of our kids missing out on any of the good things that are available to them, the things that will set them up for success in their futures. There's just no way to fit a whole day off into our family routine. And then for some of us, we would love a day of rest, but it's simply not possible to practice Sabbath because it's not possible to pay rent and buy groceries without working seven days a week, without working two jobs at a side hustle. I read this week about a woman named Maria who died for the sake of a nap. She was 32 years old and she was working three part-time jobs. One day when she had a spare hour between her two separate shifts at two separate Dunkin' Donuts locations, she stopped in a parking lot to sleep in her car for that hour. She always kept an extra gallon of gas in the car in her back seat in case she ran out. And unbeknownst to her, when she stopped, it spilled. And so as she slept between shifts, fumes and exhaust from her car ended her life. Her manager said it was the first time she had ever failed to show up. Whatever our reasons are for resisting or not being able to practice Sabbath, I bet we all feel the lack of Sabbath rest in our lives. I know that we feel it because I see the ways we try to recreate what we've lost. Having given up on the possibility of the real thing, we cast around for a replacement. I've earned a day off, we say, when we're exhausted. But that's not Sabbath rest. Sabbath rest is unearned. It's a gift. It's for everyone, regardless of how hard you've worked. I need a mental health day, we say when we're too stressed and we call in sick and binge Netflix and try retail therapy, online shopping. But that's not Sabbath rest either. It's not truly restorative. And it also doesn't pull you out of the system of production and consumption that's ordering your life. 
A mental health day doesn't challenge the system, it just opts out of it for an afternoon. But the regular practice of Sabbath would actually challenge the system. It might reorder our whole sense of our weeks. You can even see our longing for Sabbath rest on TikTok if you're there. There's this whole genre of short videos that sort of romanticize a lazy Sunday. So they'll be relaxing music and video clips of the buttery morning sunlight on the wooden table and eggs frying and milk being stirred into dark coffee, a cat, zinnias in a vase. These 60 second videos are relaxing to watch. I like to watch them. They make me feel like, ah, yeah. But they're also fake. To create a video of a lazy Sunday morning requires the exact opposite of a lazy Sunday morning. It requires an enormous amount of work setting up the camera angles and filming and editing and posting. And it's all done in order to get views that will in earn, com, earn, earn income for the creator. So it's a fake rest, but it works because we long for it. Our culture our economy, they are not set up for Sabbath. In fact, they actively work against it. The Israelites Moses is speaking to in our reading from Deuteronomy today, they also knew what it was to live in a world without Sabbath. For generations, they had lived as slaves in Egypt as an underclass of people who were counted as units of production, building the storehouses of Pharaoh's wealth. The rest and abundance and freedom of the Sabbath were not a part of their lives as slaves. And so when God sets them free and they cross the Red Sea and begin wandering in the desert towards the promised land, their imaginations for work and rest and economic community needed to be entirely reshaped. All they had known was this slave system. Maybe the reason it took 40 years before they could enter the promised land was that they needed that long to shake the training they'd received in exploitative labor practices. They needed to learn how to rest in God's provision. So God brought them to the desert and provided their food, manna and quail, every day, just enough for that day, until they began to know that life didn't depend on maximizing output or filling storehouses or immoral extractive practices like those they'd known in Egypt. Life was a gift to be received with joy. Trust in God's provision was to be foundational to their new way of life. And then, as they're poised to enter the promised land, Moses reminds them again of the Ten Commandments, of God's way for them to make a new society and community that was utterly different from the one they'd escaped. Remember me, God said in these commandments, and don't pledge your allegiance to false idols, and don't use my name to justify your selfishness. And then the fourth commandment, Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, just as the Lord your God commanded you. This Sabbath, Moses goes on to say, isn't just for you. It's a total rest from work for you, your son and daughter, your employees and farmhands, your ox and your donkey, your livestock, and any of the immigrants and foreigners who live among you. Remember, you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. I wonder if we could begin to turn towards Sabbath in our lives, even in small ways. Making Sunday a day without internet or a day without shopping, for instance. Or maybe just Sunday afternoon, a time for intentional naps and pleasure and walks in the woods. Perhaps we can find ways to disentangle ourselves from the ceaseless economy for one day or even half a day or maybe a half hour every evening if that's what you can manage. 
and begin to accept the gift of time to attend to the joys and abundance God has given. Our families and loved ones, the bird song on the back porch, the wild blackberries that are there for the eating. If we could accept the gift of a day to attend to our souls, we could, in so doing, show our children a different way to organize a week. And I wonder if we began to keep the Sabbath, if that practice would also make us less content with a world in which some people and places are unable to keep the Sabbath are continually exploited by a quest to store up more and more wealth. Maybe in keeping the Sabbath ourselves, we would find ourselves more willing to do what needs to be done to extend the possibility of Sabbath to our sons and daughters and our employees and our oxen and our cattle and our immigrants and everyone in our community. Perhaps if we began to practice Sabbath rest, we would find our, our eyes opened to the ways that we, like the Egyptians of old, rely on an overworked underclass, locally and globally, to make our lives of leisure possible. The practice of Sabbath isn't about self-care or finding some balance within a busy life, as good as those things might be. Sabbath is about a reorientation of your entire week that can also reshape the way you view competition and acquisition and your self-worth and your relationship to other people and to the rest of creation. Sabbath reminds us that God created and said that it was very good and then God rested. And God said, this day of rest, he didn't just say it was good, like all the things he had created. God said, the Sabbath day is holy. The first thing God ever called holy in all of creation was a day. God rests on that seventh day as a way to model the idea that there is a moral limit to the demands of production. And that while creation is good, rest is holy. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember that its gift isn't just for us, but for all creation. <clears throat> Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy 